Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Transformation Tuesday. I am Pastor Jermaine Scott, Senior Pastor of New Macedonia Baptist Church, and we welcome you to our Bible study for this evening. Thank you all for taking time out of your schedule on this wonderful, this terrific Tuesday evening and join us as we continue to study God's word, as we continue to look at the call of women. We thank you all for joining us on tonight. Please do me a favor. Uh, whatever platform you're watching or viewing on, please go ahead and subscribe, like, our Facebook page, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page. Please go ahead and share this at this time. Uh, we thank you all for joining us. So please go ahead and share it at this time. Um, so that way we're able to get it out to as many as possible. Um, Facebook, I um, apologize in advance. Um, looks like my internet might be it'll work itself out all right so uh thank you all for joining us we're so excited to have each and every one of you on tonight if you need to follow along with us please visit our website new macedonia under the section bible study slash sermon notes and click on the one that says 2 23 and you can download or follow along with us on this evening so once again our website is new macedonia under a section Bible study slash sermon notes and click on the one that says 221 23 and you'll be able to follow along with us on this evening. We're going to open up with a word of prayer and then we're going to go into our lesson on this evening. We have three different scriptures we're going to be looking at. Each one is its own separate point and then we'll go right through. So we have three points on tonight and then we'll get out of your way for this evening. So let us look to the Lord on tonight. Eternal God, our Father, we come tonight, Lord, once again, just thanking you, O Father God, for who you are. We thank you, O God, for how you have blessed us, how you have kept us, how you have protected us, how you have healed us, how you have provided for us. We thank you, O God, for the power, your power. We thank you, O God, for the testimonies. We thank you, O God, for your goodness and your mercy, O God, for truly, God, you are wonderful and you're worthy to be praised. Now, God, as we come into this time, this mode, this space, this place of teaching, Lord, we're asking, oh God, that you just continue to have your way in our atmosphere, oh Father God. Lord, give us uh, nuggets, oh Father God. Give us instruction, oh Father God. Give us wisdom and knowledge, oh Father God. Give us application, oh Father God, so we're able to take this and apply it to our life. God, as we even know we're studying, oh God, the call of women, oh Father God, we also as men, oh Father God, can get nuggets out of this, oh Father God, to apply to our lives. So tonight, oh God, we're just asking for a fresh anointing, a fresh touch from you, and God will be careful to give your name all praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, we say amen and amen. Amen. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to open up. Once again, I said I got three scriptures that I need to give to you. Um, well, no, first we'll start with our story. Yeah, I forgot about that. We'll start with our story and then we'll go into our scriptures on this evening. Once again, our website is newmacedoniapokemo.org under the section Bible study slash sermon notes and click on the one that says 2-21-23. It says, our story says, it was a wearying plane ride from San Diego to the military hospital overseas, but Jackie got no rest. She was too anxious. This was not the reunion she wanted for her and her husband. Bruce, a lifelong army officer whose career had taken him to deployments across the United States and around the world. Every time Bruce was reassigned, they dutifully made the moves, understanding that they were together in marriage no matter where it took them. They packed everything they had and she took on the challenges of settling into new housing, making new friends and supporting him, even as their family grew from two to three, then four. But the family wasn't allowed to follow when Bruce was stationed at Camp Afrigen in Kuwait, which meant Jackie leaned harder on her faith that her husband would be safe. Before Bruce left, he gave her a bracelet engraved with the mispa, the Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. For months they carried her through, then came word that Bruce was injured in a vehicle crash. Now Jackie stood in a hospital corridor being told Bruce had been moved just before her arrival, but it wasn't clear where. As an army chaplain and an administrator tried to sort out the confusion, a kind charge nurse saw Jackie's distress. Don't let worry overtake you now, she said with a smile. Believe me, with a loving partner like you in his corner, he'll be fine. So she told her, let not. All right. So, um, 
some of the difficulties that she was facing is that they had to travel from different places. She had to uh, make new friends. Um, this particular time, she went to a place where, um, you know, she wasn't able to go. Um, and so these were some things that they had to deal with. So the question tonight um, that we want to think about or that we want to ponder is, can we trust God to care for those we love wherever they are? Can we trust God to care for those we love wherever they are? So by the end of tonight's lesson, we'll be able to discern Mary Magdalene's motivations for committing her life to Jesus. We'll be able to appreciate the sacrifices Mary Magdalene made in order to follow Jesus. And we'll be able to embrace a lifestyle of wholehearted discipleship. So tonight we're going to be looking at, we're going to be doing a little bit of jumping tonight, a little bit of jumping. Um, so if you don't mind, instead of reading all the scriptures at once, um, I'm just going to do it as, as, the, as the way the Lord leads us. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you a little background to lead us up to it. But tonight I want to talk to you about Mary Magdalene. Is that all right? As we continue our study about the call of women, I want to talk to you tonight about Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple, a faithful disciple. So for those that follow along in your Bible, we're going to be looking at Luke, the eighth chapter, verses one through three. We're going to be looking at Mark, the 15th chapter, verse 40. And then we're going to be looking at John, the 20th chapter, verses 10 through 18. Those are going to be our three separate points. So point one's in Luke, point two is Mark, and then point three is John. So let me give you a little background. So in this section, we're talking about Mary Magdalene, um, and then we talk about demonic possession. Demons are evil spiritual beings who are enemies of God and have certain power over people. They belong to the number of fallen angels that kept not their first estate. Demonic possession is mentioned quite often in the New Testament with a variety of effects as, such as muteness and epilepsy. The child's posture in Mark 9 is evidence of the physical exhaustion caused by the intense nervous strain of demonic possession. The gospel records clearly, records clearly show that Christ distinguished between ordinary sickness and demon possession. Jesus generally heals sick people by laying of hands or anointing. The demon possessed were delivered when the spirits were commanded to depart. For example, Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 8, Mark, the 6th chapter, verse 13, and Acts, the 8th chapter, verse 7. Sometimes multiple spirits possessed a single person, such as the legion of demons who possessed the man in Gennesaret, or even our very own Mary Magdalene for tonight. So although some traditions have historically advanced the idea that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, more recent Bible scholars have debunked that claim because scripture does not support it. Possibly the link began with scholars assuming Mary Magdalene, who was first named in Luke the eighth chapter in the second verse, is the same simple woman who anointed Jesus in Simon's house. In Luke the eighth chapter and the second verse, what we really learn about Mary Magdalene is that she is a, was a woman from whom seven demons had gone out and she was a close follower and friend of Jesus. In Mark, the 15th chapter in verse 40, we learn that when Jesus was crucified, Mary was one of the, was among the group of women who looked on from a distance. When the Sabbath was over, she was also one of the three women who brought spices to anoint Jesus' body. Mary's consistent presence with Jesus and his appearance to her after his resurrection points to the value Jesus placed on the contributions of women to spread of the gospel. All right, so let's look at Luke the eighth chapter verses one through three. Luke the eighth chapter verses one through three. I'm gonna be reading out the New King James Version of the Bible, but please feel free to follow along with whatever version that you do have. Luke the eighth chapter. Begin that first verse, and we're going to read just one, two, and three. It says, Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And a certain woman, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. So the first thing we want to discuss tonight as we look at Mary Magdalene and a faithful disciple is the 12, the 12 and some women, the disciples and some women. 
Jesus' earthly ministry would not have been possible without the support of disciples and friends who traveled with him as he proclaimed the gospel. Now, I got a, I got a, I got a exclamation point, a slash, a asterisk, a dash. I got everything so that that tells me to stop in my notes. And so I want to read this again, and I need you all to hear me. Jesus' earthly mission would not have been possible without support. Um, there's nothing that we can do uh, without the support of our brothers and sisters. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how uh, how 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 many times you know you you think you got all by yourself. You will get wear, wore out if you try to do ministry by yourself. You will get burnt out. You will get stressed out. You will get worried out if you try to do ministry by yourself. I know there are some things God has just for you that's just for you, but you still need the support. Uh, if it's just not a prayer, if, if it's just not, you know, somebody coming along, they don't even got to say nothing. You need support. That's right. We all need people. It's very important. Good evening. Good evening. It's all important that we understand that even Jesus needed the support. He would not have been possible for him to, to, to fulfill his earthly ministry without the support of disciples and friends who traveled with him as he preached the gospel. There's no way you can fulfill the mandate on your life by yourself. That's why it says we are many members but part of one body. We all need each other. You can't say to this member, I don't need you. You can't say to that one, I don't need you. We all need each other. So there's no different black, white, rich, poor, educated, uneducated. We all need each other and we need to support each other. Um, we, we're in a season, a day and time, especially with this internet preaching and this, this, these, these, uh, these, uh, Facebook prophets where there has developed what we call a, a spirit of competition. Back in the day, I know none of y'all know nothing about this, but back in the day, I'm just talking from experience. Back in the day, uh, the old, especially in the Baptist church, the old church, uh, they would get together for things called platform services, right? And these platform services, you had several different preachers on, and they all preached, they all flourished off each other, they all, you know, were coming together, and they would all be preaching on one topic or, or a specific subject, and you know, they were all coming, and it was all a good time, but now, now, now now, now. You can't have platform services no more because this preacher is trying to out-preach the preacher to be free him. This preacher is trying to win members this day or so. He's trying to over-preach everybody else. It's not about you. It is about the kingdom of God. And so if we can get rid of the spirit of competition and learn to come together, just imagine the more we can accomplish. You don't believe me? Let me give you scripture. One can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. I'm in the, I'm in the Bible for those that you know, know the word of God. So if we all can support each other, if we all can learn to work together, yeah, it's supposed to be 10, 15 minutes and they up there 30, 45 minutes. You got to get the organist to play over them. You trying to pull on them to get them to sit down all out of order because they're trying to build themselves up instead of just simply doing what God called you to do. But imagine if we all supported each other, how much more effective we would be. But the problem we're having is, is we don't want to serve in ministry because we're not being supported. We're always being put down. We're always beating each other up. We're always comparing each other to ourselves. We are different. We are created in God's image, but we were all uniquely made. And so we have to support. So let me read the sentence one more time. And I know this is only the first sentence and I didn't got on for a little tangent, but let me go ahead. Um, um, G that, oh my God, sister Shalinda, you have no idea. You lose interest. That's right. You lose interest when, uh, you know, when, when, when there's competition or there's no support. You, you don't want to do anything no more because you feel like, what's the purpose if nobody's going to support or if I, everybody's comparing themselves to each other? What's the purpose? All right, here it is. Jesus' earthly ministry would not have been possible 
without the support of the disciples and friends who traveled with him as he proclaimed the gospel. You know why you need support? You know why you need people that's going to be around you in your circle and not always put, try to pull you down? The reason why is because when the weight of ministry is heavy on you, there are people that can push you. There are people that can pray for you. There are people that can help you get through those hard times of the weight of ministry. So as seen in the gospel of Luke, Jesus' ministry takes him all over Galilee. He traveled with 12 disciples. He had 12 of them. We know one of them wasn't really witty. He, had, he traveled with 12 disciples to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. However, Jesus did not travel with only his disciples. A group of women also accompanied Jesus. Each of the women who traveled with Jesus had been cured of evil spirits or diseases. Mary was called Magdalene of the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. Joanna also traveled with him. She was the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa. Her faithfulness to Jesus possibly indicates her opposition to Herod's rule. Luke also records Joanna as being one of the women, along with Mary Magdalene, who first discovered Jesus' tomb was empty in Luke the 24th chapter, verse 10. Another woman named Susanna also traveled with them, and the women who traveled with Jesus and the disciples, here it is, are you ready? Remember I said this, you, you need people to support you for, for various reasons. Here it is. The women who traveled with Jesus and the disciples provided resources such as food and other support for the group. Um, um, so, so what I need you to get about the 12 and some women is, is you have to, I, I know y'all going to say, Pastor, you didn't said this before, but I'm going to say it again. You need to check your circle. You need to evaluate who is around you? That's right. Uh, every Elijah needs an Elisha. Uh, you need to check your, your surrounding. If if all you if if everybody that's connected to you, let me, I'm gonna try to make it as plain as possible. If everybody that is with you, if everybody is around you, if all they're doing is taking and taking and taking and taking and taking, that's not the group that you ought to have around you. It says that even though Jesus was the Messiah, even though Jesus was teaching and preaching, it says that the women um, provided resources. In other words, they were willing to give back. Um, your, your, your relationships ought to be have, have a sense of, of reciprocity. Um, it ought to be reciprocal. Uh, what you give, uh, you ought to be able to give back. Um, you ought not be the only one uh, sacrificing, but they ought to be making sacrifices to you from um, making sacrifices as well. That's why it's important to check your connections. Check who you connected with. You know, a lot of times, um, the reason why we get burnt out in ministry is because we're always pouring out and we never get nothing back in. We, we, we praying for this people. We praying for that people. We traveling up and down the highways. We going state to state. You preaching, you ministering, you pouring out, you pouring out. But when do you take time or when, when is your support system pouring back into you? Oh, pray. Call, they call you up. Pray for me. They call you up. Pray for me. They call you up. I need this. They call you up. I need you come here. They call you up. Can you come do this? Can you come do that? But when does the support system say, listen, can let me give you some resources. Let me give you some support. Let me pray for you. Let me do something for you. It's important for us to make sure our circle is a circle where it's a give and take. Yeah. It's not just taking. It's not just you giving all the time. You have to check your connection. If we're going to be successful, if we're going to be efficient, effective in ministry, whatever area of ministry you've been called to, if you're going to be effective, you have to have the right support group. You have to have the right like-minded people around you. You have to have people that are going to be with you and going to uplift you and going to support you through it all. You know, they're not worried about getting the title. They're not worried about getting the limelight. They're, you know, people that are always pushing, always helping, always supporting. It said that the women who traveled with Jesus and disciples provided resources such as food and other support for the group. They were there to help one another out. That is what this is all about. Um, that's, what, um, uh, that, that's what it's all about. Um, making sure you are there to help each other out. Uh, support one another. So the women here, they, they have been cured 
of diseases or evil spirits. And so because they had witnessed and because their relationship with Christ, now they were connected and they wanted to follow. They wanted to give back for the blessing that God had. In other words, they, or that Jesus did. They didn't want to just keep taking from Jesus. After all he'd done from, they didn't want to just keep taking from him, but they wanted to give back what they could give back. Which brings me to another point before I go to point number two is never discount what you have the ability to give. Let me, let me say it again. Never discount what you have the ability to give. Um, just because you're not the one that's preaching, just because you're not the one that's singing, just because you're not the one doing this or that, don't discount uh, what God has blessed you to be able to do. These women had received a blessing from Jesus, and they easily could have said, well, we're, we're nobody. We're, we're, you know, we're, 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 we're supposed to be quiet. We're supposed to be in the back. You know, we're nobody, but because Jesus took the time to come and see about us, we're going to use the skill set that we have. We've identified our strong suits. We identified our skill set and we're going to do all that we can to be a blessing or support to him. Identify identify what you're good at, identify your skill set, identify what you've been blessed with, and then that's how you support. That's how you give back. You know, you might not have a job making six figures. You might not be able to sow, uh, you know, financially, but you might be able to make stuff. You might have a different gift. And so you identify your skill set. You identify what you've been blessed with, and that's how you can support. That's how you can give. That's how you are able to help out. And then when you give that, and when the person that's blessed with the money gives the money, and then the person that's blessed with this gives that, and when the person blessed with that gives that that's how we all come together to fulfill the assignment and the call that God has placed on our lives so we need to that's right we need to know our positions and be secure in it uh we're hmm, sister Marquis you great start something um I felt the Holy Ghost right there uh, we too good and grown to still be getting upset over positions mm -hmm. we we too good and grown to be getting upset because somebody else is doing something that we think we ought to be doing. We have to identify where we are at and learn to stay in our lane, learn to stay in our position and be good with who God called us to be. Because just because here it is, and I'm, I'm moving, because here it is, you don't know what that individual had to endure to get to where they're at. And so you're trying to get there because you see the goodness, you see the blessings, you see, you see, uh, uh, you 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 see what what everybody else has. You see what they're getting, and you say, "Oh, that looks good," but you wasn't behind the scenes. You wasn't on the back burner. Um, I, I think I think uh, I told the story before. I'm gonna tell it real quick about T.D. Jakes when he was in West Virginia. Many of y'all didn't even know that he started out in West Virginia. Y'all think the, uh, the Potter's House in Dallas is T.D. Jakes, and that's all y'all thought about. That's all y'all know about. But really, he started out in West Virginia. And when he was in West Virginia, he used to travel all up and down the country, all the down up and around the um the country, uh, preaching. And the reason why he was preaching is because he had a staff at home that he had to come back home and he had to pay his staff. And he said he was one time he was praying and the Lord had revealed to him that all these great things that he had. He said a prophet had prophesied to him all these great things he had prayed. He said, but he, it was a time where he was afraid to kneel down and pray in front of people because he had holes in his shoes. And he said he began to talk to God and he said, now God, I, what I see uh, does not look like what you have spoken over my life. And he said the Lord spoke to him very plainly and said, if you learn to just wait on my time, what I promised you will come to pass. And so T.D. Jakes basically said, I had to learn to accept where I was at, be content where I was at until God made the shift. So I wasn't worried about what everybody else had and what everybody else was doing. I was working what he gave me to work. And as I was working what he gave me to work, God was moving. And then, you know, um, um, 
I moved from West Virginia, you know, to, to Dallas, you know, and now you have the Potter's house that everybody sees. And so what I, I said all that to say this, when you work with what God has blessed you with, when you learn to be, uh, 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 when you learn to be content with where God has placed you, then God can do some other things behind the scene and his time can catch up to your time because you know, a lot of us, we've already moved in front of his time. Uh huh. And so uh, uh, we just have to learn to trust the process and learn to trust God and God's going to do what he promised us to do. Yeah. So the 12 women, the 12 and some women, uh, th this part, Luke 8, 1 through 3 is just talking about us being supported, uh, being a faithful disciple, uh, you know, sticking with them. Even though, you know, others might have left, even though others might have not wanted you to being a faithful disciple, learning to just give uh, support no matter what's going on. All right. Now let's jump back a chap. Let's jump back a book. Let's jump back a book to March, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, 15th chapter. And I just got one verse here. Just one verse. Verse 40. Mark. 15th chapter, verse 40. That's just one book back. It shouldn't, shouldn't take you long. One book back, a couple, couple chapters before, and you should be able to find it. Uh, Mark 15, verse 40. Um, ready? Here it is. There were also women looking on from afar, among who were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the less of Joseph, and Salome. All right? So, uh, um, the second point I want to give you, and then I'm going to come back to that. The second point I want to give you is refusing to leave the scene. Um, the, a faithful, the mark of Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple, was refusing to leave the scene. Um, when God blesses you, we must learn how to bless others. Um, um, can 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 I tell y'all? Can I tell y'all something? Um, sun, Sunday, I, I was excited but concerned. At the same time, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going. I'm just going to give it to you plain as possible. Sunday we w we was blessed to be a blessing, and I was I was excited, but I was concerned at the same time, because uh, initially I asked you to do the very best that you can the very first time, um, and then when I said the Lord had already given me an amount, um, and 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 I knew it was there, and I said okay, I'm a, I'm a match half of it. All of a sudden, uh, I, I probably shouldn't share this with y'all, but I, I, I asked the, the church uh, for $50. And do you know that we raised an additional $200? Um, now, now, mind you, now, mind you, I asked you to do the very best that you can. The reason why I was concerned is because if you had just did that the very first time, we wouldn't have no issue. So, so with that, with the reason why I was concerned is that because it it lets me know that there's still a little bit of of a pull. There's still a little bit of disconnect of the trust that this is what God has called me to do because it was in the house. You just was holding on to it because if you just did that at the very beginning, guess what? You know, it it, it was wasn't nothing else to be done. So, so I thank you because you were, you were, you were obedient and you were faithful and, and we were, and we were truly a blessing to somebody. We were blessed to be a blessing. And so, you know, when God blesses us, we have to learn to bless others. After all, I know, I know nobody wants to hear this, but can I just tell you this real fast? You are never blessed for yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know you didn't want to hear that. You are never blessed just for yourself. Your blessing is always uh, wrapped up with somebody else. God always gives you to, so that you can give somebody else or so that you're able to help somebody else or that you're able to, to lead somebody else. You are blessed to be a blessing to somebody. That, that's the whole reason why he blesses you is so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. Why in the world will God give you everything your heart desires for you to hold on to it yourself? That, that's not how God works. He wants you to let people know that he's real. And so that's why he blesses you so that you can bless others. Others that might not ever get a chance, you know, that might not want to get an opportunity to know him now and get an opportunity to know him. So we are blessed to be a blessing. All right. So let's jump back to Mark 15, uh, verse 40. Uh, there were also women looking on from afar among who were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, the less of the Joseph of, and of Joseph and Salome. So now Mary is refusing to lead the scene. 
The women who traveled with Jesus supported him in life and in death. Here it is. Let me, let me, let me can I paint the picture? I, I don't, I don't really got time, but can I paint the picture real quick? Uh, understanding that they're in a time where uh, the ones who were called of the way, the ones who were following Jesus, if they got a hold of you, they were, uh, if, if you were a follower of Jesus, they, they were crucifying you. They were killing you because um, they, they did not want the gospel of Jesus to go on. They, they were trying to end it. So that's why they crucified Jesus. And so everyone that was with them, they were looking out. They were looking for them because they were trying to arrest them. Remember, none of the disciples except for one uh, were there. Remember, Peter denied him three times. But yet this woman, these women, even, even with the thought of death or imprisonment lingering, they still refused to leave uh, the side of Jesus. They still refused to leave the scene. Uh, they still supported him in life and in death. They, that's right. They were steadfast. They were, un, they, they were unmovable. Their support was there no matter the circumstance. Can I work it right through here? I don't even, I don't got this much time tonight. Can I work it right through here? Um, the, the, they, they were willing to support no matter the circumstance or here it is, the ridicule or the outcasting they was going to receive for themselves. Let me make it plain for you. Um, we, we support when it's popular. Let me let it sink in. We support when it's popular. But when it's an unpopular opinion, we support from a distance. We don't, we don't want nobody to know that we agree with that. We don't want nobody to know that we go along with that. We don't want nobody to know. But we'll tell the individual, we support you. We got you. We got you. But it's from a distance. These women were there, right there. They were there up front. Their support did not waver even in spite of the imprisonment. Their support did not waver even with the thought of death lingering. Because why? They understood who he was and whose they was. That's right. They did, there was not undercover support, their support, it was not a, a, a CI operative operation. There was out front and we have to have that same type of support. We got to stop being undercover supporters, but we have to be supporting out front because here it is. Uh, why, mm, why is it that, you know, when they brought it to you, you, you support them, but they brought it to you and it didn't end with you. Uh -huh. If you truly support it, it ought to end with you because you ought to set the record straight. You ought to have stood up and spoke what you believe and it would have ended or it would have deaded or it would have brought everything to an end. But the reason why I kept going is because you sat there like a church mouse and didn't say a word and because you were afraid to support. You support privately, but you ought to support publicly as well. Uh, they should not be able... Mm, all right, I'm going to move on. Um, so support... Ah. Support you. They, they were supporting in life and in death. Mm -hmm. All right. Each of the gospels presents slightly different details of Jesus death and resurrection. But the account is the briefest in the gospel of Mark, which was the earliest of the four gospels. Mark does not indicate that the disciples remained at the foot of Jesus cross, but he does note that there are women who looked on. Um, these women included Mary Magdalene. Crucifixion was meant to be a humiliating and a shameful execution. People would not normally associate themselves with such a person. Let me say it again. Uh, the crucifixion was meant to be a humiliating and shameful execution, and people would not normally associate themselves with such a person. Crucifixion also demonstrated the total power of the Roman Empire. People who are crucified served as an example to Roman citizens of what happens when one crosses Rome. These women associated themselves with someone who was a threat to the empire. They associate themselves with Jesus. And though they are not right at his immediate feet, they were close enough that they were witnessing and the people could see that they were supporting Jesus. Uh, they did not desert their master 
as the other disciples did. Uh, I wish I had time, but let me give it to you. Um, remember the disciples, I, I'm sorry if I'm talking fast, but I want to give it to you. Um, y'all ought to know me by now. Uh, the disciples, there was 12 of them. You remember one named Judas? He, 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 you know, he betrayed him. He gave him up for some silver, and then he went and hung himself. The other 11 uh, that was left behind, one denied. So then there was 10. One denied him three times. And there was 10 left. And so out of those 10, nine of them disappeared. They had other stuff to do. They were nowhere to be found. And it was only one that was standing there with his mother and Mary Magdalene. And this one out of all the other ones, you remember these 12 disciples, they went along with Jesus. You know, they watched him heal people. They watched him feed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. They watched him call Lazarus back. They heard everything he did. They seen him come walking on water. He told the storm. He told them peace. He told the uh, storms be still. He did all these things in their presence, and yet they were nowhere to be found but these women. Mm -hmm. wow. the, these women said, even though we did not walk with him, even though we did not witness all the things that they witnessed, even though we didn't have the closeness that we had with him, even though we wasn't in the Garden of Gethsemane with him when he was turned over, even though we did not was all that, guess what? Our support is still with them because we know who he is. You ought to, when you know who an individual is, your support has to be with them. Um, 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 you know, your support should be willing to take the fire with them. Uh-huh. Y'all don't believe me. Let me give let me give you an example. It was these three young brothers. Um, you know, they were in a time where uh, people were saying when when a certain sound was going off, they were to bow down to a golden image. And these three young brothers said, "Listen, uh, we we know too much about him for us to bow down to this golden image." They said, "Listen, uh, we 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 not we not gonna do all that. You know, we we not bowing down." And so Nebuchadnezzar said, "Wait a second, I put y'all in charge. Uh huh. I put y'all in the spotlight. Y'all gonna support me." Uh huh. I, because I gave you, I made, I made y'all who y'all are. So y'all gonna support me? They said, No, we can't support you. We gotta support the one who created us. And so when the image went off, you know, they they did not support Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar got mad and it made him look bad. So he threw him into the fire furnace. He said, If your God is so strong, he gonna save you. So they bound him up. They threw him in the fire, and then all of a sudden Nebuchadnezzar looked in the fire, and the three that was bound up was in there walking around. He seen the fourth one. He said, Wait a second. The fourth one I see looks like the son of man. And so he said wait a second, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you three come on out of there. And when they came out, they did not look like what they've been through. Why? Because their support was with the one who created them. When you support the one that has created you, when your support is with the one who has blessed you, you don't got to worry about looking like the trials and tribulations you go through. I'm preaching better. I'm talking better than y'all responding tonight. But when you support the one that is always taking care of you, the one that's always protected you, the one that's always healed you, the one that's always provided for you, you don't got to worry about the circumstance or the trials and tribulations, that's why you can say let not. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't got to worry about it because let not your heart be troubled. You got to understand tonight, your support has to be with the one who is blessed with you. We support everybody else. Mm -hmm. Everybody. We can go and support this one. We support that one. We support our children. We support our spouses. We support our job. We support our family. When was the last time you showed God the same support? You know, you only serve God when it is comfortable. You only serve God or support God when it benefits you. But when was the last time you supported God even when you was in trial, even when you was in when uh, when you was in a hard spot, when, when things were not going the way you wanted it? Your support has to be with the one who has created you. This woman said, listen, even though they're going to look at us crazy, this is the part that blessed me, even though they're going to look at us funny, even though we are going to be associated with this one and they might come at us, I don't care because I got to stay connected to the right individual. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you got to understand, as long as I stay connected to God, as long as I stay connected to Jesus, it don't matter what they say about me. It don't matter what they try to do to me. It don't matter what happens. I know God has the power to watch over me and protect me. And so I'm going to stay connected. I, my support is going to be with the one who is always taking care of me. We got to support the right one. Mm -hmm. So here it is. They, they were supporting. They, they were there. Even though they were going to be associated with Jesus, they were still there. They were, they were, they weren't right underneath his feet, but they were still close enough that they were going to be associated. These three women stay with their master through his death and are the first to come planning to anoint his body on the morning of his resurrection. I'm running out of time, but I'm gonna get this one to you real fast again. Uh, they, here it is. Are y'all ready? Let, let, me, let me let me bless you. It was a custom uh, in those days that when somebody died. 
uh, you had to prepare. They didn't have embalming fluid. They didn't drain all the blood out of you. They, they didn't have these modern technologies. They didn't have these advancements in science that we have nowadays. And so the body, uh, it would decompose fast. And so now what you had to do, uh, so because, you know, once 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 the heart and stuff isn't going anymore, uh, the, it, the stuff inside of you, the gases and stuff, um, you know, it would begin to eat at, at it. And so, so what they would have to do is they would anoint the body for burial. They would anoint the body and repair the body they will wrap the body because i don't know if you ever been around you probably not but if you ever go around anything that is decomposing uh it has a smell to it uh-huh and and so anything that's dying or decaying has a smell to it and so they didn't want the smell to get out they didn't want the body to rot so they would have to go and anoint and they had to do it quickly and so even th they were close enough I mean, remember there was there was 12 disciples one killed himself one denied his, denied him three times nine were nowhere to be found so it was only one there and but even though the, you know that he had disciples these women Men were there and they said listen now that we've witnessed his death we have to do something about his body uh they they, they their support would, would be on his death because now if they're going to go anoint him even in his death that makes them a direct disciple or a direct relationship with Jesus but they did not they were not concerned with being connected to him they just knew they had to do what they had to do they had to support him so they were the first to come planning to anoint his body on the morning of the resurrection all right now let's jump two chapters over I mean two books over to John let's jump to John let's jump to John John the 20th chapter John the 20th chapter verses 10 through 18 um, that's right. We got to hang with Jesus. That's right. You know, I mean, uh, it, you know, uh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. You know, if you know, like I knew you, 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 you wouldn't leave him because when, when you look back over your life and you think things over, it's only because of him that, that you made it through some of the things you made it through. You knew you was messed up. You knew you was jacked up and, and yet he still supported you. And so now here it is. The, the, uh, let me, can I, can I, let, let me give, let me give you this golden nugget, right? I'm gonna give you this one for free. Let me get this golden nugget right now. Are you ready for it? Um, he supported you while you were messy. He kept blessing you. He kept healing you. He kept providing for you. He supported you when you was jacked up. He supported you when you thought you were big and bad enough to do. And so now that you are grown and in your right mind, because before you wasn't in your right mind, you was in the worldly mind. And so now that you have a full understanding or a partial understanding of who he is, why don't he have your full support? What you saying, Scott? Uh, how come when you get around other individuals, you stop talking about Christ? You start talking like they start talking. Um, it, um, I, I, I really need you to hear me tonight. I really need you to hear me tonight because your speech shouldn't change based on the groups that you hang around. If, 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 if I, if I feel like I'm offending you by using language that offends you, I shouldn't use that language at all. It, if, if, if I feel like I can't say things around you because of the connection that I know you have with God and I'm claiming to have that same connection with God when I get around people that don't know God, my language should not change. I should still talk like I know who God is. So I, when I support God, when I'm supporting the Lord, my talk, my speech, my action should always line up with my support. But we hide our support for God when we get around other people because we want to try to fit in. And then we get around the church folk. We want to pretend. We want to put on the mask. We want to act like we saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you I'm tired? I'm sick and tired of fake Christians. I know, I know y'all don't like me tonight. It's all right. It's all right because I got to give all, I gotta give him all my support. I'm tired of people that change based on the wind of who they come in contact with. If I'm saved, I'm saved. I can't put my salvation on the shelf so I can cuss you out. If I'm saved, then my savedness ought to allow me to give you grace. If I'm saved and I'm supporting my Christ, then my, my salvation ought to allow me to, 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 to keep on 
keeping on with the right mindset and my speech and my actions. We have to move beyond this phony facade of being saved and learn that our support for God has to become a reality. And the only way it comes a reality is everyone we come in contact with ought to know we support God. But, you know, we, we get around different people and, you know, we, we do different things around different people. You know, our drinks change. Our language change. The things we do for fun change. How, how is that possible? Did God change? No, he says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Oh, I think I lost some people tonight. It's all good. Uh, uh, that's right. We, we, we dress ourselves up. We camouflage ourselves. We try to disguise it. We don't want nobody to know. Now, 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 let, let, I can't be a pastor. You know, I can't be a pastor without giving you the whole sense, the whole, the whole picture. I got to give it to you because I understand everybody's not at the same place everybody's at. We're all work in progress. I get it. I get it. We're all work in progress. And so as long as we're working towards something, you know, that's, that's, that's the place. But what I'm saying is, is I'm not working towards it. I'm just simply when I'm with you, I do one thing. When I'm with them, I'm doing a whole nother thing. And I'm, I'm cool. I'm okay with that. The devil is a liar. You ought not feel comfortable living that life if you support God. If your support is with God, no matter what, you ought to feel convicted because I didn't confess Christ. How, how am I shouting on Sunday? How am I shouting on Bible study? How am I praising God when we go to church? But then the rest of the week, I'm doing everything the people in the world is doing. I look just like them. They can't tell me no. They can't tell me apart. I look like them. I talk like them. I sound like them. I act like them. I drink like them. I smoke like them. I do everything they do. But I'm going to say I'm a child of God. I'm going to say I'm sanctified. You can't be sanctified because you ain't set apart. Let me move on. Let me move on. Um, Mary Magdalene was a faithful disciple. Here, here it is. Here it is. Let me back up. Remember, they, they questioned why Jesus was around her. They said this was a sinful woman. But Jesus said because she had a, a change of heart, because her mind was renewed by the word of God, now she's come into the full knowledge of me. Look at the difference in her. She went from being a simple woman to being a faithful disciple. So I, I get a work in progress. I get that. But when you continue to make the same old mistakes over and over and over and over again, are you a work in progress or is this just something you're saying, oh, this is who I am? Because you can't just simply say this is who I am and I'm a work in progress. The two don't go together. You, you ought not be doing the same things you were doing five years ago today if you're growing in God. The closer I get to God, the more, the less I look like the world and, and the more I look like God. And so if you're saying every action you do looks like God, um, then maybe you don't know enough about God. All right, let, 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 let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, uh, John 20, uh, John 20 verses 10 through 18, right? Verses 10 through 18. Ready? New King James Version. Then the disciples went away and again to their own homes. Ain't this something? I, I, uh, the word of God is just so good. Uh, back up. Me remember, remember, uh, I, I said he had 12 disciples. One killed himself. One denied three times. Uh, nine were nowhere to be found. Uh, it was only one there. Um, he, he did now. And let, let me read verse 10 again. He did now. Let me read verse 10. Uh, then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Uh, isn't it something that the ones that walked with him was closer to him didn't want to be near him, didn't want to be bothered. Okay, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the other feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She supposed to him, being the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Here it is. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me. 
For I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. The first person that he spoke to, uh, the sinful woman, the first person that he spoke to, it was the one that was not, um, was not just, uh, 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 acting the part, but was actually living the life. Uh, she changed her life. She was a faithful disciple. And so now here it is. She went, uh, he spoke to her. Mary is the first to find the empty tomb. She then alerts the apostles. Uh, and when Peter and John went to Jesus empty tomb, they thought that somebody had taken his body. So Mary said, when it told them, they came and checked it out. They went back home again. You know, they, they didn't do no investigation. Uh, they felt, you know, they, they didn't want to be caught. They didn't want to be identified. They was afraid that something might happen to them. I mean, after all, uh, if they took the body, I mean, they already killed him. If they took the body and did something to the body and they find out we here, just imagine what they're going to do to us. So they, you know, a little, little frightened, a little, little scared, wanted to go back home and regroup. They didn't want to regroup in public. They wanted to go back home and regroup. Uh, and so they returned home and like Peter and John, Mary feared that someone had taken the body also, but she was unwilling to leave the tomb without trying to determine where the thieves placed him. I wish we were in a day and time, uh, like in, in, like in the late eighties church, uh, or late, early eighties, uh, uh, late seventies church. I wish we were in a day and time where people had that same mindset that they refused to leave or refused to, re to, to leave the presence of God without finding out what God wanted them to do. Now we pray, we get up, we run, we done. We, you know, we, we get done praying. We don't have time no more to tarry. You know, you know, we don't have tarrying services no more, you know, cause, cause we live in microwave generation. Everybody wants things quick, fast, in a hurry. We think everything's instantaneous now. You know, we got instant uh, coffee, instant mashed potatoes, instant this, instant that. You just put it in the microwave, hit a button, boop, it's done. You ready to go. You know, so we think everything is instant now, but I don't know about you, but there's nothing like having, you know, you know, where you come home and, and, and the house has an aroma to it, where stuff's been cooking uh, in a crock pot slow or something's been cooking in an oven, you know, it takes time to make it, you know, we, we some, sometimes you got to tarry. Some things you just can't get instant. Some things you got to take time to manifest. And so this woman was unwilling to leave the tomb without trying to determine where the thieves placed him. We have to have that same mindset. We should be unwilling to move. That's right. We don't have no more shut-ins. We ought to be unwilling to move until we determine what God wants us to do. We are not guests when God is speaking, but we ought to Wait until God says something. She was willing, willing to move until she found out where he was. Mary remained at the tomb only because of her devotion for Jesus. She remained there. It would have been easy for if she if she was not committed, if she was not faithful, if she was not showing complete support, it would have been easy for her to get up and go about her business. But she could not leave because she was showing her de complete devotion to Jesus. Mary's grief prevented her from immediately recognizing Jesus when he appeared to her in his resurrected body. He now had his glorified body. And so her grief, she was overcome. She didn't recognize. She thought he was a gardener. And when Mary Mary finally recognized him. She knew Jesus because of the distinct way he spoke to her. How many of you can identify Jesus by his words? How many of you can identify him by the way he speaks to you? We're getting confused. That's how come we have so many false prophets and so many false teachers and so many uh, fake pastors nowadays because we have a hard time identifying him. He said, my sheep shall know my voice. We don't know who he is. We, we, hear, we, we hear something that tickles our ears and we run with that. Oh, he just said, I'm going to get a brand new house. How are you going to get a brand new house with a credit score of 450? Come on now. You got to work on your credit first. How you going to get a brand new house and you you only making a home $400 a month? How you going to afford it? I know, I know, I know. God can do the impossible. You can wake up tomorrow and your credit score will go from 450 to 1000, I mean uh, to 800. I get it. He can do the impossible. But let's be, let, let come on now. You what what work are you doing? What work? Just because that's what the prophet said don't mean it's going to come to pass tomorrow. You got to stop uh, uh, allowing people to tickle your ears. And identify God's voice. Listen for the voice of God. Do you know God's voice? That's it. She, 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 she didn't go. Here it is. Look, can I tell you? Here it is. Here it is. Second Corinthians. This is where Second Corinthians uh, five and seven comes to life. Uh, Second Corinthians five and seven. What does it say? We walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, I'm going to show it to you right here. Uh, she saw him. 
but it wasn't until she heard him, right? Okay. She didn't go by what she saw. She went by what she heard. So her faith was connected by his voice. When my faith is connected to his voice, then I'm able to identify who he is. Uh, uh, um, um, uh, oh. We have to be able to identify his voice. I, I got to, I got to move. I got to move on. Uh, did, did I read all of it? Yeah, I read all of it. So here it is. The last point I'm going to give you. I got to get out of here. I'm, 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 I'm running out of time. Woo. Um, the last point I want to give you is looking for signs of resurrection. Looking for signs of resurrection. Ah, here it is. I, I thank, thank you, Holy Ghost. He won't let me rest. Um, here, here, can I give it to you? Um, um, learn God's voice by learning God's word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop um, waiting for somebody else to do the work for you and study to show thyself approved. Tuesday and Sunday ain't it. I, I, I appreciate, hear, hear me, I appreciate, I appreciate your, your faith and your trust in me. I appreciate it, but don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. Get in the word for yourself. Don't, don't, don't depend on me. I make mistakes too. Don't depend on me. I don't know everything. Don't get in it for yourself. Get get the word in you for yourself. If if if, if, if your, your pat don't 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 put it all on your pastor, but find out for yourself. Study yourself. This this should be um um this should be an expansion of your personal study. Tuesday and Sunday ought to be an expansion of your personal study, your personal uh, intimate time with God. So the way you know His voice is by staying in His presence and learning His word for yourself. All right, are you ready? Here it is. Uh, um, looking for signs of the resurrection. Um, Mary's the first one. Um, when they got there, you know, they, they'd seen, they left, they went away, but she was unwilling to leave. She, she said, I'm, I'm going to stay here because I'm devoted. She was uh, unable to recognize him, but when he spoke, she knew it was him. Um, she, she knew it was him based on the way he spoke. The miraculous had happened, and Mary was the first of Jesus' friends to bear witness to the fact that Jesus has risen with all power in his hands. Um, this this going to this gonna bless you. This is going to bless you. I might, I might have to give it to you. The Baptist in me might have to come out three times. I might have to give it to you real fast. Let, let, let me try it first. Let me try it the first time. Um, because of her support, she was the first one to recognize the miracle. Nope. Y'all y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. Let me, let, me get to, let me get it to you a second time. Because she was faithful. She was the first one to recognize what he promised had taken place. All right, I think I, I, think I got 20 of y'all right there. Let me give it to you the third time. Because she was devoted, she was the first one to see for herself and hear for herself the words he spoke come to life. All right, I, I got you. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Y'all ready? When you stay connected to God, when you are devoted to God, when you are faithful to God, you'll be able to see things that others cannot witness. Why? Because I have a mindset and a heart and a desire. I'm not going to go nowhere but I'm going to stay here until God does what he says he's going to do. I'm not going to move because people tell me I'm crazy. I'm not going to go nowhere because people tell me I'm wrong for keep on praying and keep on praising and keep on worshiping. I'm going to stay right here until I see it. Everybody else, they went home. Mm -hmm. they, they went home. They, 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 they came. They saw it. He said, we ain't here. Let's go home. Let's have a powwow. Let's try to figure it out here. She said, okay, y'all do what y'all got to do. But as for me, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to figure out what's going on. Because she was there, Jesus showed himself to her. He said, because you're devoted, because you're faithful, because I have your support, let me show you something. Now, let me bring the women piece into this. Remember, this was a woman. Remember, this was a time they said women were supposed 
supposed to be quiet. Women wasn't supposed to be doing it. But yet Jesus took this woman to show himself to first. We have to stop with this thing in this 21st century because uh, even today, as far as we have come, we still have so much further to come. You still have different denominations, still different beliefs where women can't do anything. But yet Jesus said, the first person I'm going to reveal myself to is this woman. It would have been easy. It would have been easy. It would have been easy for Jesus to just said, you know what? I'm going to go to the house. Remember, he knew where they were. He, he knew he knew they were home. He knew exactly where they were. It had been easy for him to go to the house. But instead of him going to the house, he sent her. Oh, my God. I, oh, my God. He sent her to tell them what had happened. Just imagine the excitement. I don't know if you've ever been blessed before with something and God had gave you the testimony to go share and the excitement that overcame you to be able to tell somebody, look at what God has done or look at what God is doing. But yet he, to he gave her the opportunity to go and tell the other disciples, his brethren, I'm, I'm, I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they thought they had killed me, but I'm still alive. Just as I said, I ain't went home yet. But I'm going to go. But before I go, I want y'all to know that, I, that I'm still alive. He, he, he gave this woman that ability. Um, so, so, so because she was faithful, because she was obedient, because she was de had the desire, he showed her, first and foremost, the miracle. Uh, we, 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 we have to have that same mindset as Mary. Mary could not wait to share the good news. Has God ever done anything in your life where you could not wait to share the good news? Could you, you just couldn't, you, you was having a hard time holding on to it because he just did something so great and so mighty. This is where Mary was. She couldn't wait to go to the brother and said, our savior, our God, he, I, I just seen him. He's still alive. He's raised from the dead. Be, and because I was there, I was able to witness it for myself. So just think about that. Because she was devoted, because she was willing to stay there, God revealed himself to her first. So today we just seen Mary Magdalene as a faithful disciple. Oh, ran over just a little bit. Uh, Mary Magdalene as a faithful disciple. We can take a lesson from the book of Mary Magdalene. We can take a lesson from her page. Uh, I gave you three different scriptures about her. I gave you three different ways to look at her. And in each way, the main thing that you need to understand was her faithfulness to God. No matter what situation she was in, if it was showing support uh, because of what he'd done, if it was showing support because he needed it in his final moments. Imagine, imagine, imagine just for a moment. I know you can't imagine it because it's, it's heavy, but just ima try to imagine it just for a moment. Uh you, okay, you know you know your sins. Okay, okay, you know your sins. You you know your sins. Now now your your little itty bitty sins, your little itty bitty sins. Double that. Imagine the weight of your little itty bitty sins being doubled. And this man named Jesus took on the sins of everybody. And the ones he thought was closest to him was nowhere to be found. The ones he was blessing was nowhere to be found. But this woman, one disciple, his mother, they were there. That's the support that she showed in his darkest moment. He cried out, uh, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? He, this is what he cried out. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? He felt like he had been separated. He cried out something so that nobody else would ever have to feel forgotten about or forsaken by God ever again. This, that's how, that's, that's the way, you know, the sun, the, it was dark out. This, that's the, that's the depressing state of all the weight of the sins was on him. But she said, God, I'm here, or Jesus, I'm here with you. I, I want to show you my support. That's because she was faithful to him. So, so, so are you able to say I'm faithful like she is? My, my, I, I got that same zeal, that same desire, that same fire for God. That when they talk about my church, I'm going to stand up. When they talk about my God, I'm going to stand up. When they talk about why we worship and why we glorify and why we praise, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to support God by being, uh, by displaying his characteristics around everybody I come in contact with. I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have a set way with one group and a set way with another group. 
But I'm going to be the same because I'm going to be who God created me to be. And I'm going to display who God called me to be. She was faithful. She was dedicated. She was supportive. She had a desire to be close to him through it all. So uh, the crisis of conscious plague contemporary society. Mary Magdalene's example to us as individuals is twofold. First, she reminds us to allow God to transform our lives. I, I didn't want to deal with that because I'm already over time, but I really, um, you know, maybe later I'll talk about how God transformed her life. Um, she was able, she showed us how if you allow it, God had transformed your life. She, she had seven demons in her and God was able to do something in her life and transform her life. If we allow him, God will transform your life. Maybe, just maybe, the reason why there's two of you Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want, I don't want to bring my psychology into this, but you do know anybody that has multiple personalities, uh, is clinically diagnosed. Okay. Um, um, mm -hmm. that, 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 that you, you, something wrong. Um, if you have multiple personalities, there's something wrong. So the reason why there's two of you is because you don't want to allow God access to that area of your life. You're not ready to let it go yet. I know I'm, 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 I'm helping y'all, but I'm hurting y'all tonight. Cause, cause, cause I'm, I'm just, I'm just letting y'all look at the man in the mirror. Um, you don't want God allow God, God, uh, take care of my finances, take care of my health, but God, I still want to have fun. You, so, so, so that's the only way you can have fun. You can't have fun without it. So maybe you need to, maybe you need to look inside of you on what you're lacking that you need that to have fun. All right. Uh, I don't, I don't, let me leave you alone. Uh, you got to allow God to transform your life. Second, she shows us what it means to be a faithful follower. Here it is. And friend, a faithful follower and friend. In a world where so much seems temporary and fleeting, Mary teaches the contemporary reader to stay plugged into our relationship with Jesus. Mary's example to our churches is to not be hasty and walk away from the empty tomb. Today's churches often find that they are bombarded with statistics of how people in younger generations are less likely to attend church. These statistics sometimes lead to us to change or dilute our messages to suit the changing times. Mary reminds the church to remain steadfast. There is yet hope. You don't got to change the message. You might just need to change your method. The message is the same. You ain't, ain't, don't dilute your message. Sin is sin. If you, you, that's right. The, 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 the word of God is a two edged sword. It cuts going in and cuts coming out. We can't dilute God's word so that you can feel comfortable in your sin. No, it don't work that way. And you God, God's word is to convict you. If, if we don't talk about these things, if we run from these difficult topics, if you will, because you know, because, because we have feel good preaching, we have, um, motivational preaching now because we, we, because most preaching is motivational preaching now, or let me phrase that because mainstream preaching has become motivational speak preaching. Uh, we try to avoid difficult topics, but it's not a difficult topic. If it's helped me live better, it's not a difficult topic. If it's helped me get closer to God. Because at the end of the day, isn't that why we come to church? To get closer to God? To look more like him? So there is still hope. Don't change, don't dilute the message. Don't dilute or change the message. Maybe just change your method. Maybe, maybe, maybe stop trying to be God and condemn them and love them, but give them what they need. Give them instruction. Give them application. We, you know, um, y'all, y'all, y'all know. I, I love, I love preaching. I love good preaching. I love good preaching. Um, I love, I love it. Um, but sometimes uh, we, 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 we need teaching be because the preaching excites our flesh. You know, it, it gets us going. You know, we get excited. We ready, we ready to dance. We ready to shout. We ready to run. We ready to praise. But every now and then, we, we, we got write down some things. And, and, and so that way we come back to our remembrance. Um, that's why um, I, I'm, I'm moving. I'm done. I'm done. But I'm just sharing my heart. That's why it, it, it disheartens me when I see ministries move away from Bible studies to midweek service. If I'm preaching on in the middle of the week, if I'm preaching on Sundays, um, when, 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 is, when is the teaching taking place? 
Um, I, I know, I know, I know every sermon ought to be teachable, but um, there's something different because even though I'm teaching, if I'm preaching, there's going to be a celebration in it. And when I do the celebration, you might forget some of the teaching because your note taking is now dissipated. Whereas if I have a whole hour, hour and 15 minutes, okay, I'm sorry, hour and 15 minutes. If I got a whole hour and 15 minutes where we teaching, then you got, you can take notes the whole hour and 15 minutes. And so now you're able to go back and reflect on what's going on. There's no celebration. I, I, I might get a little excited, but I draw it back in 99% of the time. Okay. 95% of the time I draw it back in. And so that way um, we get back to the meat of it. So that way you have something to reflect on to help you get through the week because it's important. This is what's important. This is what you need. All right, all right, all right, I'm done. They talk about me now, iron 20. All right, I'm done now. So uh, there's still hope for us. All right. <laughs> Let us look at our handout. Let us look at our handout. I got to get out of here. <laughs> Let us look at our handout. If you need a copy or if you want to follow along, visit our website, newmacedoniapokemook.org, under section Bible study slash sermon notes. Click on the one that says 221-23, and you'll be able to follow along in our handout. Um, once again, uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, uh, listening on today, uh, Sister uh, Joan, Sister Vanessa, good to see you. Good to see you. That's right. That, pa Pastor, that, you're so true. Uh, good teaching causes celebration. It does. It does. Uh, the Word of God is, is, is to make you celebrate all by itself. You know, the word, of, the word of God, the meat. You know, good meat produces its own gravy. That's what, that's what, that, that's what they say. You know, I ain't no chef or nothing, but that's what they say. Uh, and I can testify, you know, when I cook a good steak, it, you know, it may make it up, but I ain't, I ain't all right, you looking really? at me crazy. All right, let me, let me go ahead. All right, all right, hand out, because cause I'm getting myself in trouble. All right, hand out. <laughs> all right, hand out. Number one, phrases that are true about devils or demons, they're enemies of God, and they are considered fallen angels. Um, enemies of God and fallen angels. Two, what did Mary and the other women provide for Jesus? Um, they provided resources, resources, resources. What did Mary and other women provide for Jesus? They provided resources. Uh, three, as Jesus hung on the cross, Mary Magdalene and other women watch from a distance. Watch from a distance. They were close enough to be seen. They watch from a distance. Number four, Mary was the first to find the empty tomb. Mary was the first to find the empty tomb. And number five, Mary recognized her river and savior when he said Mary. When he spoke to her, she recognized that he was the risen savior. All right, our daily readings for this week is Wednesday, 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 9 through 18. Once again, 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 9 through 18. Thursday is Colossians, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 15. Colossians, the fourth chapter, verses 7 through 15. Uh, Friday is 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verses 11 through 13. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 23 to 28. 2 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, verses 11 through 13. And 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 23 to 28. Saturday is Acts, the 18th chapter, verses 4 through 11. Acts the 18th chapter, verses 4 through 11. Sunday is Acts the 18th chapter, verses 12 through 17. Acts the 18th chapter, verses 12 through 17. Monday is Romans the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 2, 6 through 7, 12 through 13, and verse 16. Now, if you feel like it, you can just go ahead and read verses 1 through 16, but those are the main ones you need for our teaching. Uh, Romans the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 2, 6 through 7, 12 through 13, and verse 16. Tuesday is Romans the 18th chapter, verses 1 and 3, uh, verses 18 through 21, verses 24 through 26, and then Romans the 16th chapter, verses 3 through 4. Now, I apologize in advance. Uh, uh, next week, I got four points, um, but we're going we gonna to work through them. I got four points. We might end up breaking it up into two. Might end up breaking next week into two different lessons, but we'll see how it goes uh, next week. Because uh, I don't want to keep you long. Just by way of announcements, if you have uh, 
uh, uh, if you'd like to sew in a New Macedonia, we have three ways you could do so. You can mail in the post office box, 474 Pocomoke, Maryland, 21851. You can get through the Give Life app, just search out New Macedonia Baptist Church Pocomoke, or you can give in person every Sunday from t- or during our morning service. We invite you to partner with us in our Focus One campaign. We're asking that you sow a dollar a day to help us continue to further the ministry that God has called us to. We also invite you to join us every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. for a call for prayer. Um, I can testify to the power of prayer this week alone. Uh, the miracles that we have, uh, we can testify to um, just on this weekend alone, how God had turned n- three negative situations around. And I am so glad to be a witness of the power of prayer. So please join us on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. for a call for prayer on our prayer line. Then you can join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. Uh, Sunday school is only an hour long, so please join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. Uh, Then you can join us every Sunday morning uh, in in our sanctuary for our service. Uh, there's room for you. Join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. in person at 518 Young Street, Pocomoke, Maryland, 21851. Or you can join us uh, via our virtual sanctuary via Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Then, of course, every thir- every Tuesday is Transformation Tuesday at 7 p.m. Every Tuesday is Transformation Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, you can join us via Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or Zoom. Uh, this Sunday, this Sunday is our Heritage Sunday. Please wear your African attire, uh, whether you're in person or not. Uh, if you're uh, watching virtually, take a picture of yourself and tag one of the social media pages. This Sunday, during our morning service. Then this Sunday afternoon, we will be traveling to Free Indeed Ministries in Snow Hill, Maryland for their Heritage Sunday as well. Uh, so we're asking all that is available. The van, the bus will be available to go. Uh, the bus will be available to go for those that are traveling with us on this Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Then on March 11th, on March 11th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, Jerusalem Baptist Church Women's Ministry is hosting a women's conference. Uh, adults, uh, the registration is $20. Uh, youth 11 to 18 is $10. Uh, The information is on your screen. Uh, Please contact Sister Tara Knox or Sister Drabia White. This will be on our Facebook page. This will be on our website as well. Our very own Elder Tasha Scott is one of the presenters for this conference. Once again, it is March the 11th, 2023 from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, also, I did not upload the flyer, but it is okay because y'all can listen at me. Also, on March the 11th at 5.30 p.m. at uh, New Macedonia Baptist Church, we'll be having a family game night in honor of uh, the, pa- the fourth pastoral anniversary. Uh, we're going to have a family game night on Saturday, March the 11th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, right at the right in the fellowship hall, coming together uh, for family game night on Saturday, uh, March the 11th for a family game night, uh, and then we'll be uh, celebrating Sunday morning uh, during our 11 a.m. service for our fourth uh, pastoral anniversary. Uh, those are our announcements. We pray you govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, we do have a praise report. Uh, it seemed like it. I think it just got put up there. That uh, Sister Vanessa Jones is going to be discharged on Thursday. Uh, absolutely, Sister Pam. You, what you mean? That's not. That shouldn't even be a question. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we we have a praise report. Sister uh, Vanessa Jones um, is going to be released um, from the hospital on um, Thursday. Uh, I, I believe so. Um, we're, we're so excited um, about that. Uh, we do have great news. Um, sister, uh, uh, Leslie is, uh, awake. Um, she is talking. Um, so we're excited about that as well. Um, and so we want to continue to keep them too lifted up in prayer. Uh, there is uh, a still long road ahead, but we know the power of prayer and we know the God that we serve. Uh, we want to continue to pray for, uh, brother Bob Holden and the loss of his sister. Pray for brother Martell and pastor Glendon Jones and a loss of their grandmother slash mother. I'm going to play for the Sturgis family. Any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? Uh, please go ahead and type them in the comments at this time. Any other prayer requests? 
please go ahead and type them in the comments at this time. Uh, Brother uh, Bob Holden's sister's funeral is on Friday, uh, Friday at 11 a.m. at St. James UAME Church in Salisbury, Maryland. And then on Saturday uh, at uh, in Westover, Maryland at... Um, I can't think of the name of church. Pastor Glennon Tr Jones Church. Can't think of the name of it uh, right now. But uh, their, their church, uh, th that's where uh, their, uh, his mother's funeral is going to be at 11 a.m. on Saturday. New Psalmist. There you go. New Psalmist Church in Westover, Maryland. Uh, the, uh, uh, the funeral is going to be right there at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Your great niece. Okay. Please pray for one of your co-workers. Okay. All right. All right. Any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? Any other prayer request before we be dismissed on this evening? All right, let us look to the Lord so that we can be dismissed. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again tonight, Lord, just glorifying you. We thank you, O God, for who you are. We bless your name. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, we give you all praise. Father, you are truly worthy. Father, we love you, we adore you, we magnify you, oh Father God, not for what you have done, but just simply for who you are. God, for who we know you to be, for we know you to be a provider, we know you to be a healer, we know you to be a protector, we know you to be a redeemer, we know you to be a restorer, we know you to be a deliverer and a savior. Father, we know you to be a way maker and a promise keeper. We know you to be the light in the midst of darkness. Father, we just love you, oh Father God, because God, you have done so much for us, God. And even if you don't do another thing, Father, we still have the same testimony. We still have the same declaration that we love you. Father, we pray tonight, God, that you help us, oh Father God, be more dedicated. Help us, oh God, be able to be like Mary, oh God, to be faithful, Father God, in all that we do, no matter where we're at, no matter who we're around, God, help us, oh God, remain the same because you have remained the same all throughout the year. So help us, oh Father God, remain the same. Even when things are, even when the wind is blowing different ways, even oh Father God, when trials and tribulations come, you have always remained the same. You have always been there. You made us a promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, oh God, for who you are in our lives. So God, help us, oh God, achieve all that you have created us to be. Now, God, as we come in this place and this space and prayer, oh Father God, you heard every prayer request that has went forward on tonight, God. God. Lord, we thank you for the praise reports. We thank you, O oh God, for how for showing us, oh Father God, that you are still in the blessing business. But God, we still lift up our family to you on tonight, God. We lift up those that are battling sicknesses, oh Father God. We thank you, O oh Father God, that you had the right people around them when they needed you the most. We thank you, O oh Father God, that you sent the right doctors, you sent the right nurses. We thank you, O oh Father God, that you sent the resources, oh God, that they needed need, oh Father God. Lord, we bless your name, oh God, and Lord, we lift up our families, oh God, that are dealing with grief. Lord, we're asking you, oh God, to cover them now, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, those that are standing in need of provision, Lord, provide like never before. God, whatever it is that they need, oh God, Lord, we're just asking, oh God, that you put your hands on them, oh God. Let them know, oh God, that you're with them. Let them know, oh God, that you're going to see them through it. Let them know, God, that you did not bring them this far to leave them where they're at. But God, you have greater in store. God, thank you, oh God, for letting us know, oh God, that our facts do not override the truth. Thank you, oh Father God, for letting us know, oh Father God, that our, our future, oh God, is gonna be better than our present. God, we just bless your name and we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Now, God, we ask that you just be with us for the rest of the week. God, continue to watch over us, God, continue to order our footsteps in your word. And until we're able to assemble again together, oh Father God, Lord, we're just going to continue to give you glory, honor, and praise. It is in the mighty name of Jesus to Christ that our hearts and souls says amen and amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Have a blessed week, and we look forward to seeing you the next time that we see you.